My name is Mark Sumner and I am the National Sales Manager for Aceta. We are a robotic integrator based out of Council Bluffs, Iowa. For those who don't know where, how many people know where Council Bluffs is? Okay, how about Omaha, Nebraska? We're right across the river from Omaha. For those who are not familiar with Omaha, we're about three hours north of Kansas City. So that's where we're based. We're based in the Midwest, heart of the, uh, heart of the country. Um, we are a FANUC robotic integrator. We've been in business for 34 years. Uh, we actually are the company that placed the first robot outside of the big three automotive universe. So we've placed over 4,000 systems since the founding of our company 34 years ago. So uh, we're proud of the work we've done. I'm, I'm happy to be here and speak on the behalf. Today I'm going to talk about the ROI of robotics. So we'll get started. But before I get into the content, I wanted to share this quote because this is really quintessential about robots. Exploit technology, not people. Low cost labor exploits people. An efficient manufacturer exploits technology. If you think about the nuts and bolts of this quote, this really is what robots are all about. It's about exploiting technology to make you all more efficient at what you do every day. Next, I'm going to share, you a, a show, a share a video. There are three customers that I will share. The first customer is actually a very small customer in the middle of the country up in Minnesota. There are three individuals that work at this facility, yet they have a robot. So you'll hear about Priscilla, the robot at this company that they have actually named. It's going to finish with a third customer that's in the heart of Chicago. So it really shows that robots, no matter how small you are, no matter how big of a manufacturer you are, Robots can and will have a positive impact on your facility. I believe it takes some dedication. You have to want to do this. Yeah. The person that gets in charge has to want to do robotics. I now run three machines at one time. This definitely made me more efficient. When we first talked about getting the robot, uh, I, I was, really wasn't too sure about it. Basically, go walk over there, run the machine, and let it do its thing. You know, the nice thing about running the robot, too, with employees, is that you're not just a machine operator anymore. You become a cell operator, a guy that's responsible for making the robot work. So the operator is not just a guy banging out parts anymore, he's a guy that's uh, monitoring the whole system and a lot of times he can think about what's going on next. It has really helped my shop uh, in gross production output. We had, we had a 60% increase in our gross output, 60% more gross output, that just talks for itself. We have automated because it's the only way to go. It's the only way to be productive, competitive. The biggest thing is competitive. If you're, you're, you're beating yourself against other people who are doing the same part or could do the same part. We struggle to find talent sometimes. And when we get busy, we can't get products out the door. Uh, the reason we looked into robotics is because of safety and ergonomic issues. Our parts are large, our parts are heavy, and putting the robot to work saves our people uh, strains and, and, uh, and injury. Automation has helped us um, as far as employee skills. They've uh, learned a new skill trait, and it's also helped us be competitive. Uh, we're more efficient, we're able to produce more. Automation's definitely made us look at the forward processes so that we have things set up differently, a little more uh, precise, a little more front-end work to make the robot perform better. Automation's made us more competitive. When we have the robot running, it's running by itself. We're able to produce more in the same time frame that we were able to do just you know, a year ago today. So what we're going to talk about today are really four topics. One, I want to have you guys understand the true benefits of robots. There's a negative stigma right now in uh, the country for, about robots. Robots steal jobs. Robots are not good for the economy. Um, on the next page, I'll actually show you that this is not the case. Robots are good for the economy. There's a lot of positive benefits. 
walking away he from here today, it's really important for you all to understand the seven myths of robots are myths, and that's all they are. So I'll walk through that. Next, how do you dissect your company's needs for a robot? You need to really evaluate, is a robot right for me? I'll give you some of the criteria, the six criteria that we talk to our manufacturers and our customers about, are robots right for them? Third, we've been doing this for 34 years. We've seen what works well and what doesn't work well. I wanted to lay out the five steps that are really critical to make sure that your robot execution is successful from start to finish. And then finally, the challenge. I want you guys to walk away from here today really thinking, are robots the right vehicle for me? Robots are expensive and hard to justify. This is a myth. A lot of people think this is the case. Robots are not expensive when you look at the big picture, the ROI. The typical robot, has a two, robot system has a two-year ROI. It's fantastic from an ROI perspective. I think everybody's target is probably roughly around two years from a, from a payback perspective. Hard to justify. I'll go through some of the reasons that robots do justify, and I think you'll, you'll tend to agree that robots are not hard to justify when you think about all of the productivity benefits, all of the labor benefits, and all of the cost savings associated with robots. Automation is for high production jobs. Well, you saw from the first customer in that video, that's a three-person facility, and they are 60% more productive. Whether you're a small shop, a big shop, you're running a lot of, lot of parts or a few parts, robots can be really beneficial for your facility. Programming, the ease of programming has allowed for multiple parts, even in the smallest of runs at a job shop, to be worked into a robotic system. So it's very possible, no matter how big you are, no matter how small you are, no matter how many parts you're running or how few parts you're running, robots can work for you. Automation is for the same size, shape, and parts. Uh, we have a system on our floor right now where we have two grippers on a, on a massive robot, the largest robot Fanuc makes, and we can handle, with this vacuum gripper, a two-by-two two sheet of glass, we can change the gripper and then handle an 8 by 16 sheet of glass that weighs 1,000 pounds. No matter how small the part is, no matter how big the part is, the right integrator can engineer the optimal gripper to handle that part. The system will be obsolete if the parts change. If you lose the contract, then what? Well, if you're debating between hard automation for your, for your system or for your facility versus robotics, Yes, hard automation is probably cheaper up front. However, if you were to lose that contract come year three, year four, that hard automation becomes obsolete. And you've spent that money and you have a huge piece of capital equipment you can't do anything with. With a robot, you may spend more up front, but if you lose that contract in three or four years, you can actually repurpose that robot elsewhere in your facility. So as you're thinking about ROI, you gotta think about that. What's the long-term benefit to my organization with robots? Myth five, robots are hard to program. We actually had 12 executives at our, from various customers around the Midwest at our facility back at the end of July. Within 10 minutes, each of the 12 CEOs, COOs, CFOs were teaching points and programming robots. They're not hard to program. In fact, if you think about it, Yes, you have the teach pendant, which you're all f probably familiar with on the robots. You also have the HMI screen where your operator can walk up, press a button, hit start, hit how many parts he needs, walk away for the rest of the day. They're very easy to program. They're very easy to operate. Hard to maintain. If you follow all the parameters from FANUC that FANUC lays out, speed of the system, size of the part, accurate payload, right uh, moment in inertia, the typical robot does not need to be serviced for three years. Three years, you don't have to touch anything. These things will last. From there, one year PM, or year four, you need to run a PM once a year. The rest of that, you run a PM year five, year six, and you're set. These things are very easy to maintain. These things are very, very tough, very versatile, and they will last a long time. We actually have some robots out in the field that have lasted 25, 30 years. So these things can last a long time. Of course, it's contingent how rough is the environment. If you're in a uh, foundry, maybe you get a 12-year life cycle. If you are in a clean room environment and you're just loading, unloading, it may be 30 years. 
So you just got to evaluate that. Myth seven, robots steal American jobs. The example I talked about with the windows, the small windows and the big windows, this company had actually been outsourcing parts from China. This company made the decision to actually invest in automation here in the U.S. And now they are producing parts and producing, um, I think last I heard they have something like $90 million in inventory here in the States that they've been producing as part of this investment in automation. That system has brought jobs here to the U.S. So robots don't steal jobs, they actually create jobs and allow customers to be more competitive. Robots consistently deliver a two-year ROI. The interesting math here is two-year ROI, that's based on two shifts, five days a week, two eight-hour shifts. So if, if you're a facility and you're running three shifts and you're running 24 hours a day, by all means, look at a robot. Robots will make you more competitive. Robots will pay back and robots will pay back quicker than just the two years. But two years is the milestone that we have seen that you should expect from a robotic system. And by all means, it can get a lot better than two year payback. So determining your company needs. There are really six needs that you guys really need to focus on if you're trying to figure out, are robots right for me? Are you looking for higher volume? You know, a customer may have just increased demand and you can't keep up by maintaining a manual operator at that, at that system or at that machine tool, whatever it may be. Do you need to increase your utilization of your machine tools? Are you not getting everything out of your machine tool that you could potentially can't get out of that machine tool? Do you need to increase your productivity? Do you need to lower your part costs? Labor, training your labor, getting your labor and recruiting your labor is very expensive. You're having a lot of scrap out there. That's increasing your part cost. Robots can help offset that and lower your overall costs. Expanding your workforce. I would bet of all the manufacturers in the room, at least nine out of 10 of you have help wanted signs, either at your facility or on your website. It's the number one piece of justification we hear for robots. I can't find enough people. I can't find people to man my systems. This is a huge, huge, huge justification. Robots can fill that gap and not steal jobs. Robots can fill that gap to make sure you guys are competitive, make sure that you're maximizing your productivity and your customer demand. Worker safety. Ergonomics is another factor we hear a lot about. Uh, a lot of times your, customer, your employees will go home, they've been lifting 50 pound parts all day and they go home and they are beat. They don't want to hang out with Junior at the baseball game. They want to sleep. They're not very fun. They are very um, down in terms of uh, their, their safety, their work environment. Robots can help offset that and put that employee in a better balanced working position. So let's look at the volume and cost comparison. The human. All right, I, got, I have two videos here. On the left, you'll see the human. This is at seven in the morning. This is at the beginning of his shift. And what you're seeing is he's moving faster than the robot on the right. His average cycle time, roughly 60 seconds. The robot's 80 seconds. So you may be thinking to yourself, why would I want a robot? A human's faster. Well, after a long day of work, after lunch, after breaks, after talking to the operator at the cell next to him, um, after handling a 50 pound part all day long, he's not gonna operate at 60 seconds all day, every day. He's gonna get tired. On average, what we see is operator efficiency in a, man, in a manual process is 60%. On a robot, he doesn't take a lunch. A robot doesn't take breaks. A robot's not gonna talk to John at the system next to him or at the press break next to him. A robot is gonna work as long as there are parts in front of him. 95% efficiency. He's producing 340 units during that day. So the person produces 250, the robot produces 340. 
Well, you can imagine over that week, you're producing a lot more parts off of the robot. Now, you may be thinking, ah, he just put this example in there. He made up the numbers. This is actually a real-life example of a customer who went to robots. In fact, they were on Wednesday, the robot was done with the same amount of volume that a person, it took them by Friday to complete. So much to the point where this customer was actually able to get an incremental contract to fill that machine's capabilities and capacity. So there are benefits, again, from robots in terms of being more efficient and driving productivity. Obviously, if you produce more, you make more. Additional revenue and additional capacity, uh, increased sales to faster um, turnaround for your customers. How often do we hear from customers, hey, I want this as fast as possible. I need you to hit this demand I have. Robots will allow you to do that. Robots can go lights out if you want them to and work 24-7 so you can make, make sure you hit your demand. Improved cash flow, lower cost, not only at the system itself, but downstream and upstream. Um, there are a lot of efficiencies throughout the product cycle that robots can uh, deliver to your uh, facility. Personnel utilization elsewhere. That gentleman in the video could be a fantastic operator. Now that company can leverage that person elsewhere in the facility that they may be having a hard time filling that job. So there's a lot of productivity and savings there as well. Better quality. A, a person may be loading a 20 pound part into a lathe all day long. You can imagine, come hour seven, he is tired. He is tired pushing that item into the chuck and getting it into place. There's gonna be a chance of slippage there. There's gonna be a chance where he may impact the quality of that part. Well, a robot gets to the same position every single time. Your quality will improve with a robot. So if you are in a high-tech aerospace, if you're automotive, your customer demand is very, very um, specific on product quality. If you just want a high-quality product so you can market yourselves accordingly, a robot is the answer, and it could be a very good answer for you and for your customers. How many people have help wanted signs? Couple. This is, again, the number one thing that we hear, the number one piece of justification we hear from customers. I can't find workers. I can't find people to man my press break. I can't find welders. I can't find skilled laborers for my facility. Unfortunately, it's only gonna get worse. So if you can't find laborers today, it's only gonna get worse. Baby, the average age out there is 56 in terms of the skilled labor workforce. These are baby boomers who are gonna be retiring soon. So if you're having a hard time finding workers today, in five years from now, it's gonna get a heck of a lot worse out there. Throw on top of that the millennials. Millennials are not getting into uh, skilled labor positions. Maybe they should because it's going to be in high demand and they can make a lot of money. But let's face it, this is a generation. The millennials are a generation where they've played with iPads. They've played with the Wii. They've played with a lot of Apple phones. That's what they grew up with. They don't want to operate a machine tool. They do not want to load and unload a tool. They do not want to weld. They want to do something with technology. Well, guess what? Robots and the advancements in programming, the advancements of capabilities, you can attract millennials to your facilities by bringing in robots. Last but not least, but definitely important, this is very important. Um, back in, this is from 2014, there were 390 reported uh, incidents of, of manual uh, accidents on press breaks, 390. 325, so almost 80% of those required at least five days off of work. That costs you money. If you're losing laborers, not only are you paying uh, workman's comp, you're also losing productivity within your plant because of these injuries. Throw on top of that, that 60 of the 390 were required amputations of some sort. Amputations. So you can imagine that being off work for 300, with 325 people costs you money, amputations will cost you more money. In fact, last year about this time, there was a customer 
on a press break where someone was loading it or was taking care of it manually and they had an amputated arm. Unfortunate. Well, the company ended up having to settle with that individual. I think the number was $750,000. To put it in perspective, a press break cell may cost $400,000 to automate. So, you know, you weigh out the math there. Is it worthwhile to make the investment, make sure that your employees are safe, make sure that your premiums are lower from an insurance perspective? There's a lot of benefits that can help your workforce from a safety perspective. So the five steps to robot implementation for success. Again, we've been doing this for 34 years. We've seen it all. We've seen customers who have been successful with implementation. We have seen customers who haven't been successful with implementation. Uh, we've seen a lot of customers come back because they are successful, but these are the five steps that I'd like each of, each of you to take away. Number one, company-wide support. This is incredibly, incredibly important. It really starts with the C-suite individuals at your, at your company, whether a CEO, COO, CFO, there needs to be buy-off at that level because ultimately that's where the key decision makers are. Once the decision is made that, hey, we have to look at robots, we've got to make this push, we've got to be more competitive, by all means, you need to go to the senior leadership at your facilities, the ones who will be executing it to make sure that they are on board. You can't isolate yourself and operate in a silo if you are a C-suite individual and just say, we're doing robots, we're buying a system, we're going. Because if, you're, if, the, if the gentleman at the facility, the management's not bought in, it's going to be really, really tough to execute flawlessly. There's another level, though. You need to educate your operators on what you're doing and why you're doing, doing it. As we said, there are seven stigmas out there. Most notably, robots are going to steal my job. These guys want to get rid of me. They're getting a robot because they want to take my job. You really need to be clear about educating your employees, your operators at that level, why you're looking at this. Hey, John, I'm, I'm, we're looking at automation, and here's why we're looking at automation. So we could be more competitive, and I could put you on a system to oversee three different robotic automation cells, make you more strategic, make you more valuable, drive work-life balance. Those are the type of conversations that we see make for a successful execution with robots. Consensus of success criteria. Return on investment. Increased production. Reduced, uh, reduced cost. Reduced risk of personal injury. It could be one of those. It could be a combination of two. By all means, it could be all four of these. What's your goal? What are you trying to accomplish with robots? You need to really identify that. This is a key measure of success for robots that you need to understand, and everybody needs to be bought off on. Likewise, you need to understand the failure. What, what does failure look like? What makes this system not a good system for our company? The process is not in control. You, you, I talked a little bit about the silo, CEO, CFO level, sitting saying, we need to automate, go buy a system. Well, if you don't have your key decision makers, your key operators at the facility lined up on what you need, your tack time, all of that information, you're bound for failure. That system's not going to work consistently every single time. That's where that line of communication is so important. It does not meet the goals that we set. It does not actually help your workforce safety issue. It does not drive an ROI. It does not uh, cut costs. I will tell you that most systems will do these things, but you really have to set yourself up for success here. The change is not supported by the organization. Since I've been with the company, this is the single biggest issue that I have seen with robots not being successful. Maybe four of the five execs are on board with it. They couldn't get the facility on board with it, but they plussed it out anyways. They pushed it out. Well, it's, it's hard to be successful if your operators, if the people actually executing the system, don't understand the whys behind what you're trying to do with robots. So this is incredibly critical. Number four, prepare a budget. 
you got to understand how much, what, what are your ROI requirements? Is it two years for a robotic automation system? Is it three years? Is it one year? You've got to understand what this is. What will my productivity look like? Is it going to increase? Am I going to make more money so I can afford more from an automation perspective? Most importantly, these are questions, but you've got to communicate them. You've got to communicate them with the integrator. And I know that's a very uncomfortable position for manufacturers and for customers. I don't want to communicate my budget to my, I don't want to communicate my budget to the guy who's quoting me and bidding for my business. But think about it this way. You're spending a lot of money. You go out and you're looking for a house. You're talking to your realtor and you say, I want to go look at houses. What's the first thing they ask you? What's your budget? You say, hey, I, I want a $500,000 house. They're going to take you and look at a $500,000 house. They're not going to take you to a million dollar house. Likewise, on integration, it's really important to communicate that with your integrator as well. Because what will happen is if you say, hey, this is what I want, go quote it. They may go spend a couple months with your, with your team, your project managers, your engineering managers going back and forth. They may come up with a million dollar system. That may be the cost of that system. Well, your budget may only be 500,000. And not only did the integrator spend a lot of time on it, but your team spent a lot of time that they could have been doing something else with it. Let's say that process took four months. That's four months that you lost that you could have been executing a system and making money for your operation. So again, I know it's an uncomfortable state to communicate that with your, with your integrators, but it's incredibly important so, we're, is so that you're not wasting time in the decision-making process. Step five, and definitely one of the most important. Oftentimes we will get called from customers saying, hey, I want you to come in and look at a potential application. There are times we'll go in and they have no clue what they want. They have no clue what their tag time is. They have no clue where to, to find the 2D part prints with all of their tolerances. It, it really is, they're not, ready. they're not ready for automation. If they haven't gotten to this level, if they have not seen and put all of this information together, they're not ready for automation. This is critical. Time is of the essence here in terms of getting you guys a quote that meets your needs. Make sure that your team, make sure that your plant, or your facility, and your senior management at your facility has this level of detail ready. If you have this level of detail ready, if you have a budget, the whole product lifestyle, the purchase life, life cycle, that can reduce in half. So instead of a six month, it probably would be a three month. That's three more months of you guys making more money. So it's very, very critical to have all of this information. I talked about step four. ROI is incredibly, incredibly important. Finding a budget is incredibly important. This is a ROI spreadsheet that we use with our customers. I'm sure each of you may have your own ROI sheet, but a good integrator will help partner with you and help work with you to figure out what the budget should be to make sure that their system is capable of meeting your budget requirements. This, this portion on the left, picture that. It's hard to see. I know they're small numbers, but that is a machine tool tending. Picture that as, as the manual operation that we're talking about. You're running an eight-hour shift. You're running two shifts per day, 50 weeks a year, and 100% of that operator's time is dedicated to that system. Your burden rate on that is $50 per hour. I would argue that most customers we've talked to, that burden rate's actually higher than 50 bucks an hour. And I see some head nodding a little bit in the room, but 50 bucks an hour for the sake of this exercise is the number we've put in. Material handler, someone has to get the parts into the system, someone has to take the parts out of the system. You're still paying him $50 an hour. He may be working in the cell 10% of his time because he's elsewhere in the facility driving the fork truck, filling trucks, filling pallets, whatever it may be. But it's costing you $20,000 for the material handler. And it's costing you $200,000 for the operator who's sitting in front of that machine tool all day for two shifts. Maintenance. 
I talked a little bit about the operator who gets tired. Maybe he doesn't put in the part exactly the same every time, and he puts it in just a little bit wrong, and that machine tool breaks down. Well, someone's got to come back and fix that machine tool, the maintenance guy. So him, he's going to be a little more expensive, 75 bucks an hour, and 5% of his time is going to be used on that machine tool. The total amount of labor over a year based on that math is $235,000. So we talk about costs and costs going into an application. It's costing the manufacturer $235,000 a year to man that machine tool. Looking at a robot, that operator who used to be operating this 100% of the time, now he's only operating it 10% of the time. He's elsewhere. He's elsewhere in your facility operating other machines 90% of the time. You're utilizing him elsewhere in your space to be more efficient. So now you're only spending $20,000 against this cell with that same operator. Material handler, you can see the number actually goes from 10% to 20%, and that's because you're producing more parts. You're more efficient. He's not taking breaks. He's not taking a lunch. He's producing more parts. So you need to inbound more parts, and you need to outbound more parts because you're completing more parts. So your cost is $40,000. Maintenance is down to 2%. If you remember on the quality slide, robots hit the same part on that lathe, for instance, every single time. There's not going to be much damage to that machine tool, to that lathe, whatever it may be. So your maintenance guy is only there 2% of the time. Not to mention that robot doesn't break down. If you stay within those parameters, that robot does not break down. So your cost associated with the automation operation is $66,000. Your cost savings by automating versus the manual operation is $169,000 a year. So if you figure that math out and your target's a two-year ROI, you can afford a $350,000 system. I will tell you that most machine tending like that, call it 200 to 250,000. So you're well within limit. You're well within striking distance of being able to fund this automation opportunity for your facility. So your CFO is still unsure. Do I want to make this investment? It's a huge upfront capital investment. Well, this is the chart that you can show them, that any integrator will come in and help you create. But year one, for sure, you're going to make a $350,000 capital investment. But if you look, by year three, you're starting to print money. On average, a robot will last, if you take care of it, a robot will last a minimum of eight years. But I will tell you, that's very conservative. Most robots will last you anywhere from 15 to even 25 years. Like I mentioned, we have robots out in the field that have been out there for 25 years. They're so old that the people who knew how to program them 25 years ago no longer work. They're retired. So you can print money for that long when you automate. So it's a really amazing investment that once your CFO sees a chart like this, they, can, they buy off pretty quickly when they see this money capability. So what makes a successful robot user? Got to be 110% committed all the way from the corner office all the way down to the operator. If you're committed, you've got your organization bought off, you will be successful. You need a champion. Every successful, every successful customer we have worked with who has had a champion, one guy at the plant who says, this is my baby, this is what I'm going to be taking care of, that customer has been successful. People are vested into that system and making it work. Engage during runoff and training. What this means is that same champion will actually come to our facility for a week to two weeks before final runoff, and he'll sit with our integrators. He will sit with our programmers and learn the nuances and the nuts and bolts of that system. In fact, maybe a few months ago, three or four months ago, we had a champion who was in with our team, learned the cell, and he actually performed the runoff for his leadership team. From an integrator perspective, that's a great thing to see when we could sit back and watch the champion run off the cell for his leadership team. Again, active participants throughout the product cycle. Send multiple people. Customers that really buy in see even better results. Well, you know, you saw that individual in the first testimonial, the operator. He wasn't bought in initially. He didn't see the benefit. He was scared. But once he saw the benefit, 
he, he loved what he was doing. He was energized. He was energetic. He was going home and telling his friends, hey, I run a robot. That's what I do. I'm in charge of a robotic application. That's a lot more um, motivating for that individual than saying, I load a lathe all day. There's a lot of benefits to robots that can really drive positive uh, worker um, productivity and happiness for your facilities. So as I close, I wanted to lay this out. This is the challenge I talked a little bit about. How many signs will you ignore? If you're a manufacturer, there are a lot of signs out there that point you in the direction that automation is king. Uh, Top Shops put out an article that 20% of manufacturers automate right now, 20%. There is still 80% who haven't automated yet a standard machine tool. The potential is huge to take advantage for customers. Typical ROI, two years. That's a great ROI. Robots don't create scrap parts. Robots make high quality parts. You are not losing cost by scra creating scrap parts with, if you automate. No workers are out there. Again, that workforce um, gap today is gonna get a heck of a lot worse before it gets better. China. I don't know if you all knew this, but China is, has more robots today than the rest of the world combined, and they're buying more. They're actually producing their own robots because this is such a big deal for China to stay competitive. If U.S. manufacturers do not automate, we're going to lose a competitive edge, significant competitive edge to China. Your competition is buying robots. The guys who are successful, the guys who are winning the business from that end customer, are the ones who are automating because they're keeping their costs low and they're staying technologically advanced versus the competition. So as you leave today, and as you leave SME, or the event, West Tech, I want you to think, do you want to be the horse and plow who is content with status quo, who is okay with productivity as it stands today? is not willing to step on the technological advances of the day? Or would you rather be the farmer who invests in the $300,000 tractor? The one who's increasing productivity, the one who's increasing his competitiveness, the one who's making his workers happier every day. Which one would you rather be? And at, that, at this point, I'll take questions. If there are no questions, we actually have a, a little kiosk over here. By all means, stop over. Myself and Tyler will be here for a little bit. Tyler uh, is, is our local rep here in Southern California. But by all means, if you have questions, feel free to stop by. We have some brochures as well, talking more about Aceta. Question? Yeah, so the two years that you are mentioning, is that industry specific? Or like what industries is it? Two years is standard whether it be a welding application, whether it be a fab shop, whether it be a, a typical machining uh, shop, two years is traditional and that's very typical regardless of the industry we're looking at. Uh, we're talking uh, specific robots or uh, universal robots where you manipulate parts as the job evolves. So universal robots in terms of the collaborative robots? Yeah. So two years is standard for any robot system, just to be very candid with you. We use Rufanic robots specifically. Uh, we've used it since the first um, robot we sold back in 1983. Uh, Universal is a collaborative robot that is very popular today. Uh, from a collaborative, you can manipulate it with your hands and program it. From what I understand, we don't do a lot of business with Universal. We don't do any business with Universal, but two years would still be standard, if not a little bit faster because it's not as expensive. Um, but it really depends on the robot. There's a lot of robots out there from Fanuc to ABB to Motoman 
You really need to understand the quality of the robot and what you're looking for. The ease of programming, uh, the quality, the service. There's a lot of things to consider when you're purchasing a robot. It's, um, the integrator is really critical. Uh, there's a lot of integrators. There are over 700 FANUC integrators. Well, as you can imagine, not everybody is a great integrator. Not everybody's a poor integrator. You really have to do your research and do your homework. Same thing, FANUC. Uh, Motoman, um, ABB, uh, Universal, they're all different robots, all different brands, they all have their features and benefits that you really need to understand to make your decision. Any other questions? Yeah. FANUC does make a collaborative robot, it's a green robot. It's a, it's a different version than the Universal. Um, it handles more capability, more payload. The capability is the wrong word. The payload is really what FANUC is going for. It's a thicker uh, uh, material uh, that handles a greater um, payload than Universal. But Universal, obviously, is a robot that is very successful right now, and they're doing a good job from a marketing perspective. What is the smallest shop that got involved in robotics? So I'm not sure if uh, you saw the video, but that was a three-person shop. So literally, the, the sky's the limit. You can have a three-person shop, you can have a thousand-person facility. Robots, really, um, it depends on what you're looking for. All right, thank you.